Chiori is the brand new Geo 5 star added to Genshin Impact for version 4.5, and I've been testing her extensively to bring you the best information to help you decide whether or not you should get her, and how to get the most out of her if you do. This video is part 1, where I cover her performance in Navia teams, Ningguang teams, and many, many double Geo variations. Once I get my hands on the Mono Geo comp, which I've already pre-farmed for, I'll be making a part 2, so subscribe if you want to see if she's worth worth it for Ito, or as a Mono Geo carry herself. Welcome to Jello Impact, where we build and test every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. Chiori is a Geo Sword user who specializes in off-field damage using her Tomato Doll summoning skill. This skill summons one doll normally, and a second if a Geo Construct is present. The second doll doesn't double her damage, however, it's closer to a 30% increase overall. Her skill also has a secondary effect, depending on whether you tap skill again, where you switch automatically to the next character and activate additional coordinated Geo attacks for your other characters, or tap normal attack instead, where you get a very short 5 second Geo infusion you'll almost always want to do the swap skill because of the additional damage it provides being very relevant. It also feels very smooth to use to me and can speed up rotation setup, which is quite nice, although it does take some getting used to, and I find since I'm such a masher, it really helps if the next character also wants to use their skill because I'm constantly spamming that button. Her burst deals a smallish amount of AoE Geo damage with no other effects. It has a low energy cost, but since Jory won't be on field to catch many particles, it often won't be available every rotation, which is fine, you can just use it whenever it is for some bonus damage. And that's pretty much it. So how does her kit feel in practice? Well, let's talk about her team. So the main teams that we're focusing on here are everything Navia and a double Geo core where we're using Zhongli and Chiori together. Those are the main focus. That's the main focus. I just thought of Lunge Ning Wong. I have to test something. I wanted to start with what I think is almost definitely Navia's new best team. That is the duo of the Navia Chiori, the golden duo. And you're using Bennett Farina, of course. I mean, if you think about it, this makes sense. They're using the two best buffers in the game. Navia needs a second Geo character to have consistent crystallizes and Chiori is the Geo character that does the most damage. I think the big relevant thing here is that Farina is buffing both Navia and Chiori on this team. So unlike the Zhongli variant of this team, you know, Zhongli doesn't do relevant damage, you're getting more value out of Farina's buffs, I guess you could say. I unfortunately do not have Albedo yet, so I was not able to test with Albedo. The math says that this is around a 5% increase from the Albedo variant and a similar increase from the Zhongli variant because math-wise the Albedo Zhongli are both very, very similar. I personally found it more noticeable than that. It felt a bit better. It the best way I could describe it is it felt noti noticeable, but not super significant versus the Zhongli variant. I didn't find it significantly less comfy. Um, I did find it more flexible. For, so like if an enemy is almost dead and you just used your Navia skill and you don't have any Geo shards left, having both Farina and Chiori there doing off field damage, it was very easy to just have them be finished off. Whereas that kind of situation would take longer before. Navia's personal damage is slightly lower on this team because you're not getting Zhongli's Omni Resistance Shred. You are still having very consistent Geo Resonance though because Crystallize is very abundant on this team. Uh, I also know one thing with Albedo that again I haven't tested myself but his flowers can be prone to getting destroyed whereas Chiori was just a very very consistent source of off-field damage and Crystallize. Personally I don't think I'll ever use Zhongli again unless the abyss is just super super aggressive so i don't think that Zhongli is necessarily like completely power crap but it was a noticeable enough damage increase that i think you'll feel it all right next is the navia plunge team um everything i said before applies also to this team i didn't talk about the navia plunge team in my shenyan plunge guide which was too bad but i've talked about it a little bit since and it's really really good i don't think it's quite her best team but it is a very comfy team and again farina dual buffing both Chiori and Navia, very nice. Oh, for rotations, I like to do the same rotation for both of these teams. Navia doesn't really have to worry too much about needing Bennett's bur burst to buff it, buff her. So I usually start off with Farina, skill and burst, then Bennett, skill and burst, then Chiori, burst and skill. You want to burst and skill so that you can skill again to swap into Navia because if you skill and burst, then I don't, I, I, yeah, I just don't, I don't think you'll have enough time to do that and also activate her passive. 
So you'll want to burst and skill. You'll your burst will benefit from both the Bennett buff and the Freena fan for stacks and do a deal like an incredible, you know, 70k damage and then switch into Navia. And because you're kind of spamming skill with Chiori to get into Navia, you'll often start charging your Navia skill right away. So just be aware, uh, be aware of that. And the rotation's the same here. Farina skill and burst, Chenyan skill and burst. Chiori burst and skill and then go ham with Navia you want to you want to use her skill you oh sorry you obviously you open up every rotation with Navia's burst of course and then after you use her first skill instead of doing the normal attack combo that you do with all of her other teams you're going to be doing plunge and you can get up to four plunges if you're really fast three if you're not super fast but even if your fourth misses the geo infusion you'll still get a physical plunge which does decent damage anyways and then you'll want to skill again and then do your four, four plunges again so this is a good team it feels more comfy so like this is an option like for example if you don't have Zhongli but you do have these characters this is like a super comfy version that should also work very well against aggressive enemies in practice although this should feel very squishy it really doesn't because you have the geo crystallized sharp shields very very consistently so you at least get some damage mitigation some interrup interruption resistance even without Zhongli shield um, I did test it versus geo traveler by the way which I do have a decently well invested geo traveler and I personally I know other people like Geo Traveler with Navia. I personally don't. I don't find it very nice to play. Maybe I'm just skill issue with Geo Traveler, but I find this leagues leagues ahead of Geo Traveler personally. But I also find Zhongli ahead of Geo Traveler. So um, obviously the Bennett Shangling core. I found this was very good. I got my probably my second best and most consistent clears with this core, despite Chiori not being buffed by Farina. Um, you do get the Bennett buff for her burst still, but when when it's up, don't worry about using it if it's not up. Um, yeah, it was a solid solid good team again it felt better than the Zhongli version but not by a crazy amount for me is it now is it worth it so the other the other teams I tested I'll, I'll talk about is it worth it in a minute because it's 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 complicated so hold hold on with me but I did I did like the team a lot um I liked the triple geo team a bit less it wasn't awful um Shangling the biggest issue is Shangling needs an absolutely absurd amount of ER the perfect thing would be if you could run um uh, Farina on this team and so this this one got me thinking because obviously Farina doesn't work on this team. It could hypothetically work if you had a healer somewhere. And it got me thinking, what if Zhang Li was a healer instead of a shielder? And in the future, we got a, a geo healer that summoned a geo construct. Now that would allow a Navia Chiori team to make use of Chiori's full kit. And maybe the geo construct could do even a little bit of damage and could also be buffed by Farina. Like this could be a preview you into the future best Navia team. Obviously right now we don't have a Geo healer aside from Noel who can only heal on field and doesn't summon a Geo construct. So it's totally not <laughs> what we're looking for here. But I could definitely see a Geo construct healer in the future and allowing this team to actually function and I could see it being really really good. So that's kind of the you know the big brain plays that I've been thinking of. Um I also we already talked about this one. I also played with Jory Bennett Fischl uh, this one, I did the rotation a little bit differently. I did Chiori first, then Bennett, then Fischl, just to get more Bennett uptime because you want to snapshot Fischl's skill. It doesn't really it, it doesn't really matter whether you use Chiori. Chiori has such low field time, even if you're using her burst, that, and now Navia doesn't take out Bennett's whole thing, that you can put Chiori here in the rotation or here, and either one is totally fine. Um, but I actually like this team. The rotations were very fast, very snappy, very smooth. Um, Chiori's skills line up well with Navia's rotation. So honestly, a great team, especially if you need like Electro for Simon or something like that or if you just don't have the other characters or if you need to use Cheng Ling on the other side or if you don't have Farina if you don't want to use Farina whatever um it felt really really good so those are pretty much the Navia teams I'll have another tab for is she worth it let's go on to the next team uh double geo core now I tried this double geo core with Yoimiya as well as with Hu Tao for pyro characters I liked it more with Hu Tao because my Hu Tao is stronger than my Yoimiya um do I like this overall I do it felt about on par to me as using double hydro with Sing Cho Yulon. Um, I think the downside is that Yulon is more comfy to use when you have Sing Cho. Yeah, you're gonna you're probably gonna miss the occasional vape. If you watch the recording I did with this team, I didn't miss that many vapes. Um, you can see it kind of got ruined later into the rotation on some of them. But overall, like the clear speed was almost identical. I think the people who care about about hitting every single vape are like people who like their pencil lined up exactly perfectly this the the Chiori version vapes you know 95% of the time it works totally fine even with Yelan which
which I think is a, is a bit says something about well anyways it's more consistent than you'd think anyways and if you're not comfortable with Yolan here you can use Singcho of course uh, I think that this has like this is like not really a team I'd recommend because most people will have a well invested Singcho because of how valuable he is for you know national team or just in general if you're a newer player and you don't have a, have a high constellation Singcho I highly don't recommend getting Chiori for this team but if you happen to like Chiori and you really want to get her and you want to put this team together I wouldn't dissuade you this is a good team and it will you know it will perform well for you it's nowhere near Hu Tao's top teams these days and I would say it's cope uh for sure but it's not too cope it's a usable it's a usable cope and the Yoimiya one works as well um next is Ning Wong no I did not forget about the Ning Wong teams this is definitely Ning Wong's best feeling traditional team where you're using Ning Wong's normal combos Ning Wong guide coming by the way next time she's on banner whenever that is um um, but yeah, it was pretty decent because Ning Wong summons a construct with her skill. Uh, Chiori actually does her max damage on this team and both Ning Wong and Farina are benefiting from, or Ning Wong and Chiori are benefiting from Farina. This brings Ning Wong, like this, like Chiori is more of a buff to Ning Wong than Chiori is for Navia, but Navia was so much farther ahead of Ning Wong that even with a bigger buff than Navia got, because Navia definitely got buff from Chiori, but even with a bigger buff, yeah, Navia is just still so much better, but it did feel all right. Um, I didn't like it as much as I liked plunge Ning Wong with Chiori because Bennett is only buffing Ning Wong and let's be real, Ning Wong's damage isn't that crazy. So having Shen Yun also buff Ning Wong but for the plunging and plunging just being so much stronger than Ning Wong's normal attacks and charge attack, this was actually pretty good. Like still doesn't come close to, well it comes, uh, it doesn't come close to Navia but it, it does feel actually pretty good and it, it I did test, you know, Zhongli in the slot in in Shuri Sly, I did test Bennett in this slot. And overall, this is the first Ning Wong team that I would say doesn't feel too cope. It feels actually pretty good. So Ning Wong mains rejoice. This might be, I might actually recommend Chiori for you. At least think about it. If you, but this is an expensive team, but hey, maybe it's worth it to make your girl, you know, really pop off. This might be worth it. And plus, I really don't like the way Ning Wong's normal and charge attack feels. So being able to plunge is a godsend. You can even like dash cancel through her Jade screen to still get that Geo damage bonus. Nice. Um, other Geo, double Geo cores, Wanderer and Zhao. The Zhongli, Chiori, Faruzan, Wanderer core. I'm going to be straight with you. This was my favorite Wanderer shielded comp. Aside from maybe Freeze. I like, I do like myself a good Layla, Yalan, Freeze. But I personally like this better than Bennett Toma. It cleared faster and felt more comfortable um i was trying to think of teams that could use the this double geo core because basically i'll talk i'll talk about all my issues i'll talk about my issues with it later but this is a team that wants defensive utility but doesn't have like you're because you're trading bennett but you're getting a shield so the thing is by using bennett toma you're losing kind of two slots for defensive utility whereas this you're only losing one and you're still having someone that does good off field damage i definitely wouldn't recommend pulling chiori for your Wanderer, but if you happen to like Chiori and you play Wanderer or Zhao, I didn't test him with Zhao because my Zhao is not quite fully built. He's close, close. But if you happen to get Chiori and you want a comfy team, like it'll be better than Albedo, right? Because she is actually taking advantage of her full kit by Zhongli's pillar. Oh, one thing about the rotations for anything with Zhongli or Ning Wang is that it doesn't matter if you use uh, the Geo construct before or after you use Chiori, the second doll will be summoned regardless. So you don't have to like craft your rotations around making sure you get the second doll, whether the construct is on the field when Chiori summons her doll or whether you summon the construct after her dolls are already out, you'll still get the second doll. Keep in mind also that the dolls don't follow you around they say stationary they do have a pretty big aoe but it can be relevant if new enemies spawn at the other end of the abyss you might have to resummon her dolls which can be annoying the final team is the double geo chiori carry team that's right you heard it here fo first folks the wet rock has made a comeback and it's double geo double hydro this would have been a team that would have been good before farina but you're taking like the double hydro core anyways i'll talk about the problems in a minute i'm saving it for the other side Section. Chiori is using her full kit here. This one is one where you can 
use her skill and swap and you can on field Yalan for to take advantage of her own damage percent or this is a team where you can use her skill and normal attack and use her geo infusion I do not recommend the geo infusion for Navia teams even though you get geo application you get plenty of geo application from Chiori's off field dolls you do not need to sacrifice all that damage you get from her coordinate attack for the dolls okay um but the geo infusion it's so sad that it only lasts five seconds five seconds is so short it's way too short and her normal attacks they don't get like a big power boost or nukes or something it would have been really nice to see a little bit more love put into her normal attacks but hey if you want a normal attack with her and you want to use the double hydro core it easily 36 star the second half with you know the we nut and the anbite drake and stuff like that it did decent not great not very good it was decent um but by chiori being on field even when she runs out of geo infusion her dolls are still taking advantage of yalan's damage percent bonus you're still getting the geo resonance you're still getting the tread etc etc it's cope but it's a Obviously, we're not touching on the Mono Geo teams because I don't have Ito or Albedo, but I will be getting them tomorrow. They're already fully pre-farmed, and then I'll be testing for as long as I need to until I can make a very, very good Mono Geo guide, including Chiori's impact on the Mono Geo guide. So subscribe for that. Moving on to build guide, Shiori is a character you definitely want to consider level 90ing because she scales, she dual scales from attack and defense, but she scales more heavily through defense. So um, you don't get base defense from weapon like base attack. So it's more important for her than average to level 90, not as important as hyper bloom, but still very important to 90 eventually. Plus, because she's not a character that has any buffs, um, she is a character that is, if you're use her with Navia if you're going to use her with someone else as a supporting cast it is very very important that you heavily invest into her because the only thing she provides to the team is damage so you kind of have to treat her like a hyper carry even though she's not one for her to not be a dps loss versus Zhongli like the reason Chiori performs well very well in my Navia teams is because I have a pretty good artifact set for her and it's giving her you know uh, it's giving her lots of stats you might be tempted to say that it's because I have our signature weapon but for the first three hours of testing I used a level 60 weapon and she still outperformed Zhongli by a noticeable but smaller amount so yeah using a different weapon is gonna be fine but regardless she still has you know very good stats the reason why if you're wondering why I didn't notice it as obviously is because she does scale so much of off of defense right so even losing the base attack she does still scale off base attack even though she does scale off of crit damage by losing a bunch of you know level 60 is pretty low by using a lot of base attack losing a lot of crit damage you still have the passive etc etc but it definitely made it more online with her other four star and three star options so anyways point being you need to heavily invest into her because all she is providing is damage someone like Yolan even if she's not the most well invested she still provides that ramping damage bonus same with someone like Farina right a lot of these off-field DPS characters that people love so much provide some form of buffing Chiori provides no buffing so you need to invest into her for her to perform for talents her skill really is the main thing i crown this because they gave me the resources to do it i definitely don't recommend that you want to focus on her skill skill before everything else you could ignore her burst you shouldn't because it does do some damage and when it's up you do want to use it but you definitely want to you know level nine if not crown this before going this to level taking the, i would leave you could leave the burst at level eight maybe and rather than level nine the burst maybe consider crowning the skill because that really is where the damage comes from she's a character that will benefit from crowns she's a character that I will crown just like I'm gonna have I already crowned Navia or no no I haven't I will be crowning Navia once I build every character and I can actually focus on building my own characters and I'll be crowning Chiori's skill because these are characters that actually benefit from raw stats and raw stats alone so artifact quality talent level level base attack weapon stat that's the name of the game is base stats so you know level your skill high leave your normal attack at one unless you're doing a meme comp um yeah for weapons um obviously her signature is her best in slot her second best in slot is the jade cutter because of the very high crit so you can definitely go for the jade cutter um next is technically the harbinger of dawn uh, my issue with the harbinger of dawn is her skill takes her right into the enemy because it's like kaching skill so you're very liable to getting hit by teleporting right into the enemy i'm not a fan but um if you're willing to not just mash and actually play 
consciously. Harbinger of Dawn's very good. If you're at like, she's a character that can use the Harbinger of Dawn pretty well because you, yeah, you don't spend any time on field, right? Burst and skill. Just be careful to stay above 90%. This is a lot of stats to lose. Still get the crit damage, but the crit rate is definitely the bigger part here. Well, literally it's a bigger part. So yeah, Harbinger of Dawn, very good. Cinnabar Spindle, it needs more testing to see exactly how it compares. It's very, very close to the Harbinger of Dawn, but it's more consistent. So if you don't, if you have the Spindle and you, if you don't have Jade Cutter, you have the Spindle, you, you have Harbinger of Dawn, but you don't want to deal with the inconsistencies, then Spindle is going to be a great choice. Um, if you have the Battle Pass weapon, the Wolf Fang, even though it's technically a little bit worse than the Harbinger of Dawn, I would still recommend the Battle Pass Wolf Fang over the Harbinger of Dawn, again, for the consistency for most people, unless you really know what you're doing. Um, below the Wolf Fang is going to be most of the other weapons, the Haran, the Mist Splitter. They just don't benefit her as much. And then below that, you know, the rest of the weapons are useless. So basically Harbinger of Dawn is your fully free to play option. And yeah, just have to deal with it. The Wolf Fang is good too, if you do the battle path. For artifact sets, there's two very good choices. One is the Husk set. The other is the Golden Troop. I prefer the Husk because I love her burst animation. I want to use the burst as much as possible. So I want it to not be cope as much as possible. So I farmed the Husk set specifically. Um, you can strong box it, but you basically just want to do whatever is more resin efficient for your account. It's not that you can't use her burst if you use the golden troop, but it just doesn't buff the burst, right? It increases skill damage. Both artifact sets are so close in power that you can just go with whatever. If you already have a husk set, you want to go with that. If you already have a golden troop set, you want to go with that. There really is very little difference between the actual performance of the sets. Um, yeah. For main stats, it's defense sands. You'd have to have a really awful defense sands for it to be worth to use an attack percent. And I feel like most people at some point are going to be getting defense sands because not very many characters use defense. So you probably have some good defense sands lying around, especially since like if you're farming golden troop, like Fischl's taking your attack sands. So you'll probably eventually get a defense sands for your Chiori. For Goblet, you can go with ideally, well, it actually sort of depends which one's better. If you're using Golden Troop, and especially if you're using Farina on top of that, Defense Sands can be straight up better. So you can definitely consider going for a Defense Sands. I ran her on a Defense Sands for this whole build because it's just better than my Attack Sands. Or sorry, than my, than not Defense Sands, Goblet. It's, it's we're talking about the Goblet. The Geo Damage Goblet versus Defense Goblet. You can go for either one. Um, Geo is going to be better if, say you're using Hot, and no Farina, then Geo is going to be noticeably better because they give damage percent, the same type of damage percent that a Geo damage goblet is going to use. It's that same type of damage percent. If you're using her with Farina and with Golden Troop, then Defense Sands is going to, Defense Goblet is going to be better. Um, also, if you have her weapon, she gets a pretty good amount of damage percent. So that also will skew towards the Defense Goblet. So you can just kind of make the call with what you would prefer. You can always use the Artifact Optimizer if you're not sure and you can go with either crit rate or crit damage whatever makes your ratio nicer wow what a ratio i have that's a well-built jewelry for constellations for vertical investment. Now, the C1 is a constellation that people have a problem with. So how what it were, what it does is it removes basically the a major part of her, the major point of her kit, which is the geo construct limitation, which I think is lame. Basically, so what it does is normally if there's a construct, that's how she summons her second tomato. But if you have the C1, she just summons the tomato anyway. So if you want two tomatoes, also I have to say aesthetically, having the two tomatoes on screen is way cuter than just having the one, but I digress. So what this really means is for Ning Wong and Noel, but not really Noel, but mostly Ning Wong, <laughs> not Ning Wong, Navia. Why did they all start with N? Anyway, um, if you have Navia, this will allow her to fully utilize her kit. And it's about a 30% damage increase, if my understanding is correct, give or take, of course. Um, and in of itself, I don't really have a problem with this. Like if that was like the situation, like, you know, oh, she has a restriction with a character and this kind of, you know, improves the damage, blah, blah, blah. Because, you know, you could also get her weapon and that's also, you know, a 20% increase, right? So it's pretty close anyways. But like this gives nothing to an Ito main, for example, like it totally removes like this unique quirk of her kit was that she works better with Geo Construct characters. This just makes it so, oh, now she works the same with every character. So it's kind of like, why did you bother restricting 
restricting her to work with geo construct characters if you're just going to remove it with c1 which you know a lot of people you know most people don't go for constellations but a lot of people who simp for a character do and you're kind of removing a kind of a main point of her kit which it just feels feels bad right so not a big fan her it's you know if you have navia like like i said she's already an upgrade for navia um just at c0 so you can feel perfectly fine like just not getting her constellation like i thought that i would feel bad about having chiori with navia when i heard about this and i was like tempted to go for c1 even though i don't i don't get constellations of characters on this game and if you don't believe me i have a c4 of my favorite character that i still haven't activated so you know, i was tempted to go for the c1 because i love navia so much she's my second favorite dps chiori is my second favorite design in the entire game i was very tempted to go for the c1 to kind of complete that piece but i feel very satisfied with her um as is now granted i am using her weapon um i still was satisfied when i was using a level 60 weapon so if i was using wolf fang or you know some or cinnabar spindle it still would have been fine and still would have been an upgrade it's just more noticeable with her signature weapon i will be getting her signature because of drip it's really not even for the damage i just it just looks amazing i'm a huge katana simp um and the it just looks so good so i will be getting her weapon but it's not for the for the damage um so c1 or weapon generally for for navia teams c1 is better but just to finish that you don't need any vertical investment for her to be best in slot with navia if you want to use them together like i did feel no shame i think you will feel an upgrade as long as you invest into her because if you don't invest into her then zhongli will be will win out but for navia it's specifically c1 or weapon it's the c1 um for ito it's the weapon because the c1 does nothing for ito c2 a simplified automaton doll will be summoned and will deal aoe geo damage equivalent to 170 percent of the tomato's damage it's considered elemental skill damage and it's summoned every three seconds it's like a little mini nuke seems all right um c3 is her skill upgrade i'm not going to go over the other constellations she gets an infusion at c6 you know if you're going up there um good for you but you don't need a guide it's going to be you're going to you're going to you're going to destroy everything so yeah that's the tldr for vertical investment is weapon for ito and for cultured enjoyers and c1 for navia did I, I did want to talk a bit about er like i think bursting every rotation really is the way because i have an accidental 134 percent er which is way more than you really should have but you know you can't choose your sub stats so every piece has er like i can't I, there's nothing i can do about it so i have a lot of er and even still i didn't always burst every rotation most of the time i did but sometimes i didn't which is hilarious so definitely definitely do not build for er build for damage and use your burst every other rotation All right, now we can talk about value, power level, and versus others. So I don't have Albedo, so I can't talk about versus that. And I guess for this video, I'm speaking strictly from the perspective of a non-mono Geo main, because I'm sure if you're an Edo main, Chiori probably feels like a pretty solid upgrade, like a really nice upgrade. And we'll find, and I'll find out in a couple days when I do that testing. But as a Navia main, I'm disappointed, but not devastated. So to have have a noticeable upgrade over Zhongli and be a damaging character instead of a defensive character feels kind of bad. I would have preferred her. She feels like, like again, it's noticeable, but it's not super substantial. It is, it is substantial, but it's not super substantial. It's good enough that I don't feel like it's not worth it because I like the character and I like how it goes. But think about this, like look at the artifacts that I farmed for her, right? Like, like, look at how I put my heart and soul into farming this godforsaken domain. Okay, this this kind of isn't that great. And, or strongboxing this godforsaken artifact set. And, you know, getting her talent to 9 and, like, leveling her to 90 and getting her signature weapon. And it's just, like, a decent upgrade, like a decent-ish upgrade over the guy that I just slapped four-piece tenacity on and Favonius didn't even take to 90, just chilling with level 8. Like, he's not even 
and an offensive character. Like, I'm happy with her. Like, I'm excited to really get her on my account and actually use her because I do like them together and it does feel good and it does feel better and it is an improvement, but it doesn't quite feel, the juice doesn't quite feel worth the squeeze. If I was a free to play on a budget and I loved Navia, but I didn't have like, but I didn't, I didn't like simp for Navia. I didn't, you don't care about having her very, very best team. I wouldn't recommend Chiori. And I don't think it would have been a bad thing for them to just tune her up because the double geo core, like it's okay, but it isn't anything groundbreaking. Um, it feels very tame. It feels good. Like she doesn't feel bad, but with the characters that we've been getting in Fontaine, it sort of raises the expectations for what we're going to get. Like you get Linny, you get, you got Nouvellet, you got Farina, Risley, no, maybe not quite as, quite as crazy, but I don't think it would have been so bad to just tune her up 20%, right? Just make her do 20% more damage or get, make her give, um, a geo damage bonus to the active character kind of like how Yolan gives a buff like she just feels like I could never recommend someone get this character like yeah she's an upgrade over Zhongli for Navia teams but Zhongli is badass too and most people already have a Zhongli or want to get a Zhongli and he's so flexible and he has this defensive utility why would I recommend you know a five maybe ten percent increase when you have her weapon or some, something like that I don't know maybe it's more you know if you invest into her more but why go to all that effort when you could have a comfortable character that's more flexible and yeah sure you can use them together but not but at the sort of towards your detriment compared to other powerful characters and no not everything's about power for sure and i you know and like because like i said i'm still love using her and i'm still happy with the character like i'm not i'm not like upset with the character like i'm not you know like in a rage she just feels a little bit boring and a little bit solid but not great and not and i, and I guess you know not every Every character can be a Novalette, can be a Nahida, can be, you know, right? You've got to have some Ayatos out there that they are flexible. You know, not every character, if every character is top tier, then no one is. She is a solid high tier character. I'd probably put her in you know, if we've got our SS tier characters like Nahida, then we've got our good, but you know, our great, but not insane characters like El Haitham. And then we've got our solid, really good characters like Chiori. She's going to be in that solid spot. So no issues uh, for, and it's really her value as well. Like, I guess what I would like is for a character to either have really high flexibility or really high power. And Chiori kind of has neither. She has all right flexibility and all right power. Uh, for value, she doesn't really bring that much value to any account. I think just Ito, right? Like that's really, and we'll find out how good that really is in my Mono Geo video. So um, versus others, like I said, we kind of compared her to Zhongli. I can't compare it to our Albedo because I don't have Albedo, but should be just better Albedo in every way based on the calcs and just what they do. They're both very simple characters, right? Here's the thing. It's not like, you know, it's not like characters like Raiden or Yaimiko. That's why I was okay making this video right now because it's it's not like, you know, how does, you know, Raiden feel to play on field versus if Cloran, for example, is an on field electro, like how will that feel to play and you compare them and it's not just about the numbers with Chiori and Albedo, you don't play them at all. There's, they're just, they're just numbers. So I think it's fair to say based on what we know that she is just better Albedo. Um, now I will say if you don't have Zhongli and you don't want to get Zhongli or you don't plan on getting Zhongli for your Navia and you need a second Geo, Chiori is a very worthwhile upgrade and you're over. Uh, over GOMC or Navia or whatever else you're using, I actually would recommend you go for Chiori if you don't want to either wait for or you don't want to get Zhongli. I would I would recommend Chiori to those. For future prospects, I think Chiori does have good future prospects. As I talked about, I think a Geo team-wide healer that summons a construct would do wonders for Chiori overall because then she can pair with them instead of with Zhongli and go with Farina. Because I think that's a big thing right now is she doesn't really go with Farina. It's a really weird thing that she, uh, there's very few teams that she actually works with Farina on fully because she needs to have both to work with Farina 
Rune Age needs to have someone else summon a Geo Construct and someone else heals. So it's like the only team I think is that not is that uh, Ning Wong plunge team because Ning Wong summons the Geo Construct and then Shen Yun heals. Other than that, like yeah, Chiori has a hard time pairing with Farina. So that's pretty interesting. I think a Geo team wide healer that summons a Geo Construct would really open her up with Farina. And then you could do any on fielder in the front that has synergy with with uh, those characters. And that would be really, really good. What would that team look like? Because I originally said that this, if you had a team wide healer, the team wide, the, yeah, the geo healer would go right here. Yeah, this is what I, this is what I would like to see. And then if you had that geo healer here, we'll put Noel here, even though she doesn't work for it. But then you could put, you wouldn't, I don't know, who would you put? Well, you'd put Navia. But anyways, I think it would open up stuff. Also, you know, future characters who also work with geo constructs who want to summon lots of geo constructs. Jury's dolls don't count as geo constructs, but she also works with geo constructs, so that would work there. But I think that's the biggest thing that I'm going to be on the lookout for for Chiori's future prospects, and they'll kind of probably complete the Navia the Navia team honestly. And finally, for Overworld, uh, Chiori is actually an excellent Overworld character um, because she obviously summons her skill and it does damage off field damage, which is always good. And she can also, you know, she has like the Kaching thing and it goes a good amount higher than the Kaching one. So that's pretty cool. Um, the other thing you can do if you play your cards right is you can E into the sky, Swit. Oh, oh he madge. Oh, he madge. Oh, no. Uh, you can E into the sky, press E again, and then E again. And you actually get some of the highest vertical mobility probably in the game. So that's pretty awesome. It does have a pretty long cooldown. It'd be nice if it was a bit shorter for this sort of thing in particular. But yeah, E, skill, skill, and then you're pretty darn high ups if you have Kozwa because you can use Kozwa's skill midair. So that's pretty nifty. Um, keep in mind, you do have to have them right next to each other for that to work. But yeah. I think Chiori is actually going to attempt to break into some of my overworld teams because climbing is super annoying and this might be optimal climbing setup. I'm not sure. I'll have to test that out more. Obviously, I spent most of my time abyss testing and not climb testing, but you know, like, like that's pretty damn high. So I'm, I'm excited to test that out more. If you want to see my review of the banner that Chiori is featured on, check out my video right here and make sure to subscribe again for my Mono Geo video my albedo video my eula guide my mona guide my dory guide and my video where i talk about how i built and tested every single character and go through who i most regret and not who i would wish for again etc that's gonna be pretty cool thanks so much take care bye for now